Hi guys, uh, John here at Microasis and uh, welcome to uh, Microasis Workshop. Um, a little bit different today, uh, I thought rather than writing a, a, a dry newsletter um, to email to all of you, um, I would make a video instead. Um, in these strange times we find ourselves in, um, we've all got a bit of uh, time on our hands or, or wanting to do things differently. Um, I've been very fortunate to be able to come into work. I'm the only one that uh, that's in the office over the last well, eight weeks or so. Um, Simon's working from home, uh, working hard on the, uh, the, um, uh, the assembly guides, um, as well as uh, doing some other uh, work for, uh, for other people as well. Um, so I thought it would be a great idea to uh, put my name to my face for some of you. Um, those of you who haven't seen me uh, do any videos before or indeed uh, met me at uh, the shows that we've uh, attended. Um, and, uh, and also be able to show you some stuff as well because we've got um, some exciting updates, um, some exciting news and uh i thought it was uh, it would be a great idea anyway um so this is the uh, this is the cave this is the the, the workshop where uh, where everything happens um i haven't been able to go to the barbers for quite some time now so i'm i'm getting hairier by the day so uh, so do excuse that but um uh, fortunately most people doing videos these days online seem to have uh, uh, dropped any uh, production values whatsoever anyway so uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to uh, uh, throw my hand in and because uh, 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 obviously um, my production values are non-existent so uh, so anyway let's start um, this is obviously supposed to be uh, news so for those of you who don't have time to hang around and uh, hear me waffle on about all sorts. Um, I thought initially what I'd do is uh, just provide you with um, the essence of the information that uh, that I want to get over. Um, first of all, um, uh, we have news on the little micro receivers that we do. I've got one here actually. Here we go, these wonderful little units that uh, have two onboard servos, connector for the, uh, for the battery, uh, a direct connection for the, uh, the um, cordless motor as well um, that we do. Um, and uh, as many of you will know, um, these have been out of stock for quite some time now. Um, we had a, a whole batch delivered to us before Christmas, and as many of you will know, um, there was quite a, a major fault on some of them, not all of them. Um, it works out, I've, I've sort of worked out, it's around about 35, 36% of them um, were uh, were failing, which is obviously no good at all. Um, but anyway... Um, we'll go into uh, more of that later, but uh, just to say that I've had word from the factory that uh, these little units will be winging their way to us in 14 days time. Um, and that was from an email yesterday. So that is absolutely excellent news. And as soon as we get those back into stock, we will start sending out all the replacements. Um, and all of the orders that we have in at the moment. And th there are quite a few of you out there who are waiting for these, I know. Um, so we will uh, we'll get on to that um, at just as soon as they arrive. If, there are, if there's anything else um, that uh, I need you to know um, about the delivery of these, then I will, uh, I will get on to the, uh, the email or I'll, I'll do a quick video or um, anything just just to keep you informed uh, if that time frame changes but at the moment 14 days and we should have the uh, the spectrum compatible ones the Futaba compatible ones um, and the uh, FR Sky uh, compatible units as well so absolutely fantastic news very happy about that because it's been a long wait um, problems being resolved 
Um, as I said, we'll go into that in a, a little more detail um, after I've got the other bit of news out the way for you guys who need to uh, to dash off and um, go and uh, cycle or run or um, uh, whatever you need to do. Um, the other bit of news is that we have uh, revised a kit. I don't think we've uh, we've actually done this before. Um, we've been going through our uh, our existing lineup, and Simon has been putting his um, uh, mark, his stamp on the uh, assembly guides. Um, Simon, um, who is uh, obviously the other the other part of Microasis. Um, is a, a technical illustrator by trade, so um, does an absolutely magnificent job of getting these uh, these um, these books illustrated. Um, but it does take a heck of a lot of time to do. So uh, um, he's busy doing that. So he's re he's revised the uh, the Bristol um, the Brisfit uh, assembly guide from the old pictorial and and word guide that that I put together um to the uh, the the more illustrated um or illustrative uh, guide that uh, that he does um and in doing that I thought it would be a great opportunity to actually look at the kit and make some improvements uh, based on the experience that I've gained with developing new kits um that were released last year I, I actually I think the Bristol was released in 2017 possibly um so it's been a few years so i've i've, I've got a few more uh, models under my belt anyway i'm rambling on uh, there are those of you that need to see this um so here we go this is the new uh, bristol um it's done in uh, the livery of uh, a, a an australian pilot called Sydney Dalrymple um, who flew this particular aircraft D8084 um, in northern Italy in 1918 um, and uh, it's got all of the, the features that you normally see on a, a Bristol, uh, a Microisis uh, Bristfit. Um, you've got the, um, the details such as this little uh, movable um, tail skid, which has got a bit of uh, elastic suspension. Um, you've got the lovely little details with the twin Lewis guns and the scarf ring. Um, and you've got all the other details um, that you normally get with all the, uh, the rigging uh, and the struts, etc. But we've added some more detail um, to, the, uh, to the aircraft. Uh, namely, and ignore the ordnance for now, but uh, namely on the kit we have, firstly, a little um, pitot tube, you can see uh, just there, which adds a little more detail to the aircraft. And also, we have on the, uh, the right um, undercarriage strut, we've got one of our um, little rotating um, fuel pressure pump props um, that actually rotates in the breeze from the uh, from the main prop. I don't know whether you can you can see it there. Yeah, there we go. Um, the other thing that we've done to the kit as well is we've employed um, this fillet system rather than uh, on a number of the other kits where you have uh, exposed ribs. So you get a, a nice thin wing. We've actually put this uh, this fillet in. We first used this on the uh, Hansa Brandenburg W12, which worked nicely. Um, and it serves to um, strengthen the wing um, to a certain extent. Um, and it also, obviously, it, it, uh, it looks a little better. On an aircraft this sort of size, with this low um, wing load, it means that we can add a little more weight to uh, to the wings to provide um, uh, a little more strength, and uh, it's a it's a win win really. And of course, the other thing that we've done, um, which is an accessory to the uh, to the kit itself, is that we've created 
um, using um, some fantastic 3D printing um, ordnance. So we've got uh, Cooper bomb racks and we've got these um, uh, bomb racks as well for the 112 pound uh, HE um, bomb as well, which was uh, something that the uh, the Bristol would have carried in its uh, in its service. Um, and these these are all um, uh, swappable. You can you can put them in various configurations, but uh, we'll go into that later. But the the actual kit itself, there will be links um, in the in the details below under the video um, to the uh, the website, and you can go on there and you can peruse all of the photographs of the uh, the aircraft itself, and uh, and obviously if you. Um, want to uh, to buy it it's going to be available from uh, June very early in June as well obviously we haven't got much more to do to it it, it builds fine all the adjustments have been made after uh, after this build to the, the, the graphics so things line up etc um, and uh, so yeah so go to the website and, uh, and have a look at the uh, at the product page for this uh, this new aircraft, the links, as I said, uh, are, uh, are below in the text, and no doubt we'll be sort of publishing other uh, other images, etc., on our Facebook page um, and uh, and elsewhere, um, so that uh, so that you can go take further looks at the uh, at the kit itself. Um, so there we go. That's the um, that's the new Bristol, which is uh, which is all very exciting. Um, We'll also, obviously, we the, the Bristol exists, uh, the Brist Fit exists in three different other liveries as well. And what we'll be doing um, in the meantime, leading up to, uh, to to June and and the availability of the uh, of the new Brist Fit, um, is that we'll be updating those kits as well. Um, there's quite a bit of work to do, um, just reconfiguring the uh, the sprues and the print. Um, for the uh, for the aircraft uh, themselves, but all of the Bristol um, fighter kits will actually be in the uh, the new configuration from June. If you uh, order any of those kits prior to June, you'll be getting the uh, the old style kit. Um, uh, so if you want the old style kit, um, just as a sort of a um, remembrance of <laughs> of of the the old kit. Um, then feel free to uh, to go to go uh, grab one of them or uh, uh, you know all three if you like um, that would be handy. Um, but from June and obviously we'll we'll announce this and it'll be uh, fairly clear on the website as well. Um, those uh, the the Bristol will be um, uh, will be available in the the uh, the new revision. Obviously, the kit will also come with a printed version of the assembly guide too, um, and uh, it should be um, uh, should be a, a really nice aircraft to fly. I haven't had a chance to fly it yet um, with all the ordnance on, um, but I'm pretty sure it'll uh, it'll perform well. Um, if you've ever seen the the uh, the Brisfit, the the Microsys Brisfit kit fly, um, for a, a kit that's one uh, twenty fourth scale, um, it uh, it flies like it's much much larger. Especially if uh, if you've got low or uh, or no wind, or indeed you're flying it indoors, um, it's very sedate. Uh, all the other thing um, to let you know. Is that the all of the Bristol fighter kits uh, from June will come with the uh, the larger motor um, and gearbox if you order it with the flight with a uh, with a flight pack. Um, so that flight pack will include a more powerful motor um, just to give you that extra oomph when you're carrying your uh, your ordnance slung under your wing um, or indeed just to provide a little more power so that uh, you can do uh, a few more uh, simple aerobatics with the uh, with the aircraft as well great well that's the essence of the uh, the news itself um, so uh, so if that's all you need 
on your way. Uh, <laughs> um, but I thought I could uh, just um, go over a, a few other bits and pieces um, that uh, that we're doing here at the moment. Actually, uh, I wanted to go back to uh, a bit more on the explanation and the, the story behind the uh, the little receivers. Uh, I know I've um, written before, but it's it's quite interesting and. I hope I haven't lost anything in translation because obviously the manufacturers are, are, are based in China. Um, there we go. That's the that's the little the little blighter there. Um, yeah. So so the the issue started when um, we noticed, or certainly a lot of customers noticed that they were getting either one or, or both servos failing. Um, fairly rapidly and, and fairly dramatically as well in, in some instances. Um, it normally manifested itself in, uh, in one or both of the, the, the motors uh, heating up very quickly during use and it would cause the servo movement itself to stutter and, uh, and stop. Um, in the worst offenders, this would happen literally almost as w within seconds of plugging in the battery. You didn't even have to have any uh, any uh, movement. Um, but on, on others, uh, it would take um, a little while. And, and, and certainly I had a, a few units that I'd installed in some of the models um, that uh, you would fly for, for maybe a minute, minute and a half, and then the rudder would stick. And uh, so suddenly you'd be fighting uh, a, a locked rudder over one side or the other and, uh, and obviously just have to uh, either cut the throttle or bring the aircraft down as best you could um, where it was flying, um, which is obviously no good at all. Fortunately, it, most of the micro racers aircraft are, uh, are fairly robust, so they can take a few uh, bashes and smashes and, and, and uh, some, some tough landings. But... Uh, um, it's not uh, the ideal situation. So anyway, we started taking the units back and uh, uh, this was, I guess, um, January time, mid-January, when this, uh, this sort of started to, uh, to come about, to, uh, to appear. Um, and we tested an, a number here and we had quite a few failures too. Um, we uh, informed... Uh, the manufacturers who were just going on Chinese New Year, so it must have been towards the end of uh, January, February time, um, and uh, so it was it was left like that that they would uh, look at the situation as soon as they were back from their break, um, but of course then unfortunately um, we heard that in Wuhan, um, in China, um, there was. Um, this is this virus um, that was that was causing so much uh, uh, so many problems, and the manufacturers actually are based in Wuhan, which is is terrible. So um, they were all locked down very quickly um, and couldn't obviously return to the factory to do anything. Um, but when they did eventually return, which was about. What, three weeks ago, three four weeks ago, no, maybe not even that long ago, um, they set back to looking at these units. I by that time they'd received back uh, a number of units that had been returned to us, plus all of the units that I'd tested that had failed too. Um, anyway, um, they found out what had happened. If if I understand it correctly. Um, that the uh, the little um, servo housings here um, are obviously uh, injection molded. Uh, the injection molding tool uh, is a very precise affair that, um, uh, that obviously creates these. Now, it turns out that that tool was made in 2012 and obviously had been churning these things out um, for, for a fair few years, um, the it, it, what the what the um, the diagnosis was 
in fact, was that the uh, the holes that are created during the injection molding for the um, the spindle or the worm drive to to go through um, the uh, the tool had obviously worn, so the holes were smaller than they should be. Um, so on some of these, obviously the, the tool makes many of these in one go. Um, so the, uh, the the injector pins, or the, sorry, the um, not the injector pins, the the, uh, the the pins that are used to create the hole are obviously worn down to the extent where, in certain circumstances, when these things were assembled, um, there was too much friction here. And, and in fact, on this unit, which I don't know whether you can see. Let's just bring that up a little bit closer, but you can see. Um, where's me? Let's do a pointy thing here. My paintbrush. Um, you can see oh, right there. One of the little plastic straps there is missing, and that's basically melted away because this poor little motor here was trying to drive this uh, this gear here and you can actually feel that there is a lot of resistance on there. Um, if you compare it to that, which moves nice and smoothly, this one is, is stiff as. Um, and in fact, obviously, what happens is that the motor is, is trying to drive it. Um, the electronics are, are telling it to, <laughs> to, to keep, uh, keep on going. And... Uh, of course, it just it burns out, burns out really quickly. The the temperature goes up, things start melting, um, and it all goes horribly wrong very quickly. So that seems to be the issue. And you know, it, on examination uh, myself, the it certainly seems that 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 is the case. So hopefully, this will be resolved really easily. I was worried that it might be an electronics issue or um, a design issue, which would obviously take a long time to resolve but in fact what's happened is that they've just had the uh, the, the tooling repaired um, and uh, so hopefully now we're going to have some very nice reliable little uh, receiver units um, coming in um, which is which is great news what I'll do as well if um, obviously there are as I said there are a lot of you out there who have these on order already um, and those orders will be satisfied as soon as we get that stock in. We will start ch start posting the stuff out. Uh, I can't say it'll be the same day, but it, it, you know it, it'll be absolute priority once these uh, are in stock that we get uh, all of the orders um, that are uh, that are on the books at the moment, and all of the replacements that are required by people who have returned these um, uh, sent out. Uh, as quickly as we can. Um, in the meantime, if you want to order any of these, if you don't have any of these at the moment, you've been waiting for some, um, what I'm going to do on the website is I'm going to reinstate the, the multi-packs for all three varieties of these. So you can, you can buy uh, one, three, or five um, and obviously get a, an appropriate discount for uh, for the increased quantity um, that you purchase. So, um, and that all, that'll also allow me to provide um, uh, uh, an increased quantity order with the um, with the suppliers as well. So rather than ordering uh, 100 or 150 of these, I can maybe order a, a fair few more, and we can get a real flow of these uh, coming in from uh, from the manufacturer. Fantastic. Um, okay, well, let's get back to um, the, yeah, the the Bristol, the Brisfit. Um, as as uh, as we've seen uh, more detail on the on the aircraft itself, we've got the uh, the, uh, the the nicer uh, wing layout, which is fantastic, and we've got the opportunity to add these rather wonderful little. Uh, um, bomb racks with the uh, with the ordnance slung on them as well. Now, as I mentioned before, the the bombs are, are three D printed. Um, they are super smooth. You you couldn't tell um, by looking at them that they were three D printed. They look like they're injection molded. 
Um, but obviously, being 3D printed, it allows us to do it at a, um, uh, in a much smaller quantity um, without a massive outlay for any tooling. Um, we just had to spend some time um, and uh, an effort uh, putting the, uh, the the models of each of these, which Simon has actually drawn himself from references of uh, the uh, the internet and from museum photographs. Um, so we're really happy with the uh, with the result. Um, the racks themselves are um, that they, they they assemble basically. I've got one here simply from that the, the plastic card that uh, that we do um, and it folds together and glues together um, to provide you with a, a little bomb rack and um, and the great thing is the great news is that uh, if you do have an existing Bristol fighter a microasis uh, 124th scale Bristol fighter you can actually add these to it as well um, you'll notice on the uh, on the legs on these you've got a couple of little spike or you've got a spike per leg um, and you just push those uh, into the foam of the wing whether it be in the center position under uh, or between the uh, between the undercarriage or on the um, on the, the the inner wings themselves and I'm sure in the instructions we will uh, include a, uh, a position reference as well. Um, so yeah, they can be put onto the old and the new style wings. So if you've got an existing uh, Bristol, as I said, um, you can you can add this detail too. Um, we've also got the yeah, the larger motors available as well on the uh, on the website. I'll I'll put a link below um, so that if you wanted to upgrade. The, uh, the motor in your existing Bristol you can um, and that will give you enough power to uh, to carry some ordnance through the air as well um, so that's that's really yeah that's really good news um, literally um, they use a little dollop of yoo hoo on uh, on each of the uh, each of the points um, and that seems to uh, to hold it beautifully. And of course, if you um, if you do actually want to take them off, or you want to move them around, or you want to put the uh, uh, put the bomb rack uh, elsewhere, or you just want to take it off for a while, um, with the yuhu, of course, if you use a little bit of uh, a little bit of the lighter fluid um, popped onto a uh, onto a, a paintbrush, just squirt a little bit onto a paintbrush and apply it to the um, to the area where the glue is, um, it doesn't melt the foam, um, it doesn't take the, the print off, and uh, obviously it releases the whole thing um, so that, uh, that off it can come. And then obviously if you want to put it back on again, you just put a few little dollops of yoo -hoo, um, uh, onto the legs and uh, pop it back on again. So absolutely fantastic. Um, Right, was there anything? I've got some notes here, so I haven't, I haven't looked at them yet. Um, so, here we go. Receiver, yes, done. Uh, bombs away, um, yes. Uh, new kit, new manual, yep. We've looked at the details. Um, I've told you about the availability. Um, the bombs uh, themselves, I didn't really go through um, those. Um, just trying to see where my... Uh, I don't have reference apart from uh, what we've got here. So we've got, these are uh, little um, 25 pound, uh, uh, they're called uh, Cooper bombs, um, obviously made by uh, um, the, the company Cooper, um, and obviously carried in a rack of four. Um, if anyone actually manages to devise a uh, release mechanism um, for them, I'd be uh, most interested in seeing that. I think everyone would. And uh, the um, the uh, high explosive um, bomb. Let's just get it into shot there. Um, made by or designed by the um, what's it called? The, 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 the Royal Laboratories. There we go. The Royal Laboratories. Um, uh, One hundred and twelve pounder. Um, and that's actually you can see there's a, there's a little more detail to the uh, 
and to the rack on that one. Um, it actually sort of sits on an underhanging um, carriage. Um, there we go. See that there. Um, but uh, the detail, the detail is exquisite. I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Um, it's um, it really adds something quite special to the uh, to the aircraft itself. Really, really pleased with that. Um, each of them is painted. It, it actually says on the website as well. But each of them is um, is painted with. It's a single Humbrol colour. Um, it's a it's a pale yellow. Uh, there we go. It's um, matte, matte eighty one. Um, so you just uh, just brush on some of that onto the. the they're supplied obviously unpainted. Um, so once you've assembled them, um, then you can uh, then you can um, slather on some of that uh, that pale yellow paint, um, and then supplied with them as well are some um, some little little stickers. Um, using the same material that we use for the stickers on the aircraft, um, so you can do the little stripes on them too, rather than having to. I tried painting the stripes on. No, no. So stickers, um, much easier, <laughs> much better um, for the uh, for the eyesight and the the shaky hands. Uh, so, so those those are those are quite wonderful. Um, very happy that we got the. Um, uh, the little rotating fuel pump prop as well. Um, that's uh, that's a really nice addition that you can see on um, the uh, the Sopwith aircraft as well that we do. Um, but uh, yeah, um, really happy with that. So um, oh, I was going to show you. Um, let me have a look here. Uh, let me show you. The, uh, the the website um, there we go so this is the uh, the product page for the new Bristol um, and this as you can see this is the drop down box here now for some reason it doesn't show when I click on it it doesn't show on screen um, but it does in my um, uh, my window that I've got here um, so if I just so if we look at the, uh, the, the you've got the kit only, um, so um, you can choose that to uh, to purchase, or uh, obviously you can buy it with the um, with the flight pack. As I said, the flight it's the flight pack plus now. Um, there you can see me now. <laughs> it's the uh, the flight pack. That's hard to say. The uh, the flight pack plus, uh, which includes the uh, the larger motor, um, to to give you that uh, that extra. Oomph. And of course, the the Bristol has plenty of room up in the nose anyway. So um, if you um, if you want to put a bigger battery in there, um, you can too. I've I've been finding the new uh, or the the E flight uh, batteries. Um, rather good they, they do a, a 45c um one cell which uh which is which delivers quite a lot of power um more so than uh, the hyperion ones that i've been using and the um uh what are the other ones that uh, hobby king do um well anyway um so let me just um, so you've got the got the flight packs that you can choose, uh, uh, but also you've got um, some on on this part of the uh, the website on the product page. You've got the ability to select bomb racks as well. So you've got bomb rack A, which is just two of the uh, um, of the Cooper bomb racks. They will uh, that you just put those on the uh, the two outer uh, wing positions. Um, they look quite good like that. You've got uh, pack B, which is uh, just two of the, um, uh, the the larger 112 pound bombs. Um, they would once again sit on the uh, sit on the outer wings. Or you've got uh, bomb rack C, which is my favourite. Which is the you've got the Cooper bombs. Uh, on the uh, on the outer wings, you can see here. There's some pictures. Um, let's have a look. 
So, so you've got uh, the the Cooper bomb in the centre there, and then you've uh, no, sorry the 112 pound bomb in the centre there, and then you've got the Cooper bombs on the wings there, which I think is a, a fantastic um, a fantastic configuration. Um, how I've got it set up on the uh, on the aircraft at the moment is so I, I'm not sure whether that was ever how they uh, how they did it. I don't know whether taking a taking two hundred and twelve pound bombs and a rack of uh, twenty five pound Cooper bombs as well um, might have just been a little bit too much, but um, I'm not not entirely sure. Um, but I stuck it like that anyway. If you uh, if if those um, bomb rack packs. Are uh, are not what you're after. Then down here there should be a link. Um, do, 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 bombs away. There we go. So there should be a link here uh, to go to a detail the detail pack page. There we go. So you've got um, the racks themselves that you can buy on their own. Um, so if you've got an existing Bristol that you want to put bombs onto, then, um, then you can always come here and, and with these, once again, you've got, um, single rack, um, but you can also se select, uh, single, double, or triple racks on the, um, on the detail pack as well. And if I go back, we have a look at the uh the 112 pounder um you've got the single rack you've got the double um and you've also got a triple combo as well um so you've uh, you've got the lot there to uh to actually uh to purchase um and obviously you can buy them singly too so you can really um you can really uh put your various combinations together and of course you don't need to put them on Onto uh, onto Microsis aircraft, um, you could actually just stick them onto a uh, an aircraft that you've designed. Um, so let's just get rid of that. There we go. Um, yeah. So uh, I've told you what's happening with the old Bristol kits. June, they will be revised too. Um, so I think that's. That's pretty much it. Um, I hope I didn't go on too much. Um, but it was informative and interesting. Um, I've been working on a, a bit of a secret project. Um, unfortunately, um, for a few of you out there, it's not the Felix Stowe at this moment in time. Although um, I often walk past the uh, the airframe that I've built and, uh, and look and think and uh, ponder and wonder... Um, but I'm sure it'll it'll get it'll get done one day. But the new project, I think everyone is going to really really enjoy. So I'll um, I'll let you in on that um, once we're a little bit further down the line. But it's not going to be too long. Um, hopefully, we'll we'll have uh, um, some very exciting news um, towards the uh, the middle uh, the middle of the summer, and uh, we'll go from there. So everyone. Um, please stay safe, uh, keep building, and uh, I'll be really interested to know what you thought about this format of uh, getting over the news from Microaces to you. And uh, let's hope that um, we get to uh, to see ourselves videoing our flying um, fairly soon. Brilliant! Thanks ever so much. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.